Well, hello there everyone, my name's Amy, this is the Opinionated Woman, and I'm a twat. <laughs> um, I was just starting to import the footage for this vlog, um, it's only Tuesday, but um, my opening clip that I filmed yesterday, on Monday, I just deleted by mistake. So I'm coming in to say, hello, welcome to the vlog. Um, things will continue as normal after this, my other Monday clips will carry on, but I need to do what I did in that last clip and wrap up. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. Um, I decided to sit and finish this um, on Monday morning. Yes, I decided I was like, okay, I'm going to power through the last little bit. And most of this book, I was thinking, it's not that harrowing, you know? Like, Nurse Ratched wasn't that harsh. And I wasn't really think it, like, I was wondering whether maybe the movie was more dramatic. Um, and then the last, like... 40 to 20 pages happened oh my god holy moly trigger warnings for so much stuff like literally trigger warnings for um suicide violence racial slurs um what else like murder i don't know there's a whole bunch of that and obviously like the mentally ill um so that's the build-up to it is very intense, and one of my favorite parts of it, um, before we get into the, the parts of it that really, like, hit you in the chest, um, the parts that I really liked were where we would go into Chief Bromden's head, which is our narrator, um, who um, is in and out of um, lucidity, and he'll talk about the fog machine that's on the ward. And how the one day the fog machine was turned off, but actually, obviously, the fog is in his brain. And he'll talk to stuff that's in the fog and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't really play up people's symptoms in a way to, like, make the mental hospital look over overtly scary or anything like that. They just feel like a bunch of people who need some help, which is great. Because what I thought this was was that all the people in here were committed, but they weren't committed. Um, some of them are, but a lot of them are there voluntarily. Um... But yeah, I can see why this is so renowned. I can see why people find this harrowing. And it I haven't watched the movie, but it's probably a hell of a lot more intense, especially with who they cast in it. I can imagine it being very intense. So that is just my quick <laughs> opening to the vlog. Back to the show. All showered, looking like a drowned rat, looking like I might have some mascara running still. Um, <laughs> uh, but... I am all ready to work on my Smart Art article for the month. Um, it's very good timing that they uh, need the article now. I'm excited for the topic that I came up with. I am I came up with a topic that most of the time this is what happens with Smart Art. I come up with a topic I'm interested in. So looking up the stuff is fun for me. <laughs> so it makes writing these articles uh, something that I do look forward to. Um, every day though. I always make my bed. I think I've said this multiple times, but like if I don't have my bed made, my mental state is going to be really floopy. But this is the problem. Now that it's getting colder, because as you can see, wearing a sweater, it's getting freaking cold. And now every single morning, it is so cute. And she just, she sleeps in this very specific spot so I can't make the bed. I've made TikToks about this issue before. But look, she's so sweet. She likes to hold my hand, but now I can't make the bed. Calamity. Absolute calamity. I'm so annoyed. It's autumn. Why is it so cold? And I am aware, <laughs> might be being a pussy ass bitch, my mom will probably laugh at me. But it's like, <laughs> it's like 19 today. It's not even that cold. And I'm like putting an extra layer on. I mean, I do sit for a living, so um, I was writing my article for uh, Smart Art, and I, this client is so great. First of all, I made a pop culture reference to her in reference to what's in the box, and she got it and was like, oh yeah, me too, give me this whole thing. I was like, oh, this client is so great. Um, and when I first got it, I must admit I was a bit stumped on topics. And then I let it percolate. I usually, I leave the email open in a tab and I'll carry on, do other stuff, come back to it and add stuff as, as it percolates. And this was the last topic that I thought of, but it was the most interesting one for me. 
and I've just written so much. I usually, I, I just do the research and then as I'm thinking, like sentences and phrases sort of appear for me. And I'm like, okay, let's throw them over there as I get them because they like, that's what makes it flow. That's what makes it sound good. Um, so I've written a third of the article already um, and done all the research for it. Um, now I'm just going to let it sit. I'm going to let it finish. I like to do the tie-ins and finishings um, on a different day to when I do the research and the dumping because you get the opportunity to come back and look at it from a completely different perspective. And sometimes there's things that you didn't think of the day before that you might think of this time. So I already know I could easily write this article now, but I think I would, I don't like to do that. I feel like I rush through articles like that. I want my work to be good. Um, and yeah, like I said, I might think of stuff during the day and uh, tomorrow while it percolates in my head um, and then I'll add to it and that's what makes it such a good article. So yeah, I think for the rest of the day, I'm going to do a content plan. Um, June is coming up. My mom gets here. She gets to to South Africa next, this week. Oh my God. I think she gets to South Africa on Friday, but she's not in Cape Town. Um, and I am planning to do Pride content again. I think I mentioned it last week. So I'm going through all my Pride content from last year, making a list of the videos I need to do and then making a shooting schedule of what I need to pre-film because I only have, I think I've got about 10 days when my mom and my stepdad leave Cape Town. So I do have a good um, frame of time to film afterwards. I would say I would pre-film before, but some of the book <laughs> things are uh, coming with her. <laughs> um, most all of the books basically that I'm going to be reading for June are coming with my mom. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do some other update videos, um, but I won't tease too much about that. I think I've waffled enough. Um, I'll probably check in with you tomorrow. Hello everyone. It's Tuesday morning. Um, I am just finishing up uh, my Smart Art article. I'm actually just sending it off to them now. Um, it went It went okay. It went okay. I was a little bit off my game. Um, I think like, once I actually read through it, I was like, no, actually, that sounds really good. Um, but, uh, it's just, I struggled to sleep again last night and I realized this morning why I forgot to take my fucking meds. I, I portioned them out and put them there and just forgot to take them. Um, I mean, my sleep has been bad anyway, but I also pulled my neck when I was, you know, sleeping in a bad way. So yeah, that's fucking annoying. But anyway. Just sent off the article. I'm going to give send them a um, invoice because they're so quick. Literally, they'll send me um, the payment within like a day of me finishing it, which is absolutely incredible. I love I love this client so much. Um, last night, I started Scalagreg. Um, but I'll talk to you about that later. Um, but I finished a chorus rising. Thank goodness because that book was a bit boring to be honest <laughs> like it's like fantasy light it's like a fantasy like, like the way people talk about LaCroix you know like being like flavored water it's like the flavor like coughed in the next room you know that's what it's like fantasy coughed in the next room it's supposed to be based on a fantasy like on on magical beings but there's like this book had like fuck all magic in it I was like what's the point in it it's just it just seemed like a story about a bitchy girl who was um, who likes attention a lot. Um, she wasn't a character like I've read from off like commonly before, like that style of character, like kind of the mean girl. Like I don't know why I haven't read from her point of view because like <sighs> yeah, she just she wasn't the type of girl that I was um, really wanting to support. So. Yeah, I won't be carrying on that series, um, but I'm glad to have that audiobook done. Uh, I'm moving on to Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid, because I want to read, uh, they just reissued Taylor Jenkins Reid's stuff on script with gorgeous new um, covers. And I want to read some of her other stuff because I did enjoy, um, was it in Another Life? Maybe in Another Life? No, that's the one I'm about to read. 
I can't remember. I've read two of them, one being Evelyn Hugo, and it was good. I enjoyed both of them a lot. So I'd like to read more from Taylor Jenkins Reid. So that's what I'm going to do. I need to walk to get my meds. Um, so I'm going to start my audiobook then. Um, I might as well mention Skelligrig now. So Skelligrig apparently is about, um, apparently it was, it's like the novel was acclaimed because um, it talks a lot about like how technology can help patients with cerebral palsy because we're following three different people. Two of them have cerebral palsy. The issue I'm having is I had to Google this book to make sure it wasn't a harmful book because of some of the terms that they're using. But I think the terms that they're using are um, indicative of the fact that it was written in the 80s. Um, so I don't think what they're saying is supposed to be um, derogatory. I think that was just the way they used it, which doesn't make it any better to read. I don't like some of the words used, but... Um, after reading a little bit about the book, I was like, okay, I'm willing, I'm willing to give it um, a little bit more time, a little bit more time, because it seems to be supporting cerebral palsy. But yeah, okay, feeling a little bit floopy today, a little bit floopy. Okay, never mind. Maybe in another life was the one that I had saved and is also the one that I have read. Um, <laughs> but I found another one of hers, One True Loves. I think this is the one that people say they're only like okay about but I am interested as I say to read um, her backlist and unfortunately David jo Daisy Jones and the six uh, and Malibu Rising is not on script at the moment um, it's about a woman who gets married to a high school sweetheart everything's going fine he flies a helicopter one day and never comes back so she moves on and everything and then years later ta-da He's here again so it's one of those kinds of stories so i haven't read like a romancy sort of this this kind of vibe in a while so i might as well especially when um i'm reading a more like a book that's like based around cerebral palsy and a book that's based around geography so yeah maybe i need a romancy fluff a straight romancy fluff <laughs> Alrighty, that's what i'm going to be doing so i'm adding a blanket as an undersheet to my bed to maybe make my sleeping a little bit better but I've been listening to um, oh, one true love while I've been doing this and oh my neck first of all that name is cheesy <laughs> the name is cheesy but Taylor Jenkins Reid can really write relationships like obviously I told you the premise so she's it, the book starts out with her getting the phone call that he's not dead. Um, and then it goes back to show how she met him and how she met the guy that she's with now. Um, and it really gets you invested in her and in both of the relationships because they don't make like one bad guy, one good guy. Because life doesn't work that way, you know. And I remember liking liking this in maybe in another life because I remember I read that book at a very pertinent time like I really needed to read maybe in another life at the time that I did um so I remember her writing relationships that you really root for um and it's really really like easy to read I have been like putting it on to do dishes and while I was making dinner, like instead of wanting to put on TikTok, I wanted to put on my audiobook. So that's how you know uh, that a book is grabbing me. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to take very long for me to finish this one. Taylor Jenkins Reid. She also, it's another thing, is she writes things from different time frames very well. So, like working with different timelines. Uh, she's done that in all the books that I've read with uh, from her. My alarm interrupted me, but anyway, I'm enjoying the book, that's what I wanted to say.
Hello, vlog friends. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, I have been filming today, which is why I look like this. Um, so I just popped in. Obviously, you saw how my morning went. Um, I opened my curtains this morning. And I was like, where's the traffic? Because I really, I forget about our public holidays, like I really, really do. But it happens to be Freedom Day, which is celebrating the um, first South African Democratic elections, which happened 28 years ago. I know that because it happened when I was four. Um, which is crazy that our whole democracy has happened within my exact uh, age group. Because um, apartheid sort of came to an end, or started coming to an end, let's put it that way, in 1990 when I was born. And then yeah, four years later, first democratic elections. So it's our public holiday today. Uh, it's just been a filming day for me. I filmed a book unhaul, which is going up on Wednesday, if you want to see that. Um, ready for all the new books that I'm getting from my mom and my aunt, which I'm super excited for. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to come in, tell you what today is like, show you that I look cute. Um, I just had to pack away so many books. Holy shit, I have this huge pile. Um, like, I could barely fit it in the thumbnail. I had to, like, lean back holding this massive pile. <laughs> um, but, of course, because my makeup's like this, I'm also filming some TikToks. I filmed one already, and then I'm waiting for my tripod to charge so I can film the last one. Um, I found my chef's white, so I'm doing one of those SpongeBob and why aren't you in uniform transitions, going from what I can wear to work now. Um... <laughs> And what I used to wear to work. <laughs> I'm going to be like, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I'm doing today. Nothing, nothing too major. I'm going to be editing the video that I just did, um, taking all the Instagrams for it, scheduling, editing, TikToks, etc., etc., um, and sending out job applications if I can, as usual. Um, I'm nearly finished president of geography, and then I will give you my sum up. I will finish it tomorrow morning. Good morning, it's Thursday. I was gonna wait until um, I looked more presentable to talk to you, um, but I just wanna come in here quickly because I'm reading about the Arctic in um, Prisons of Geography, and I just wanted to give you this one little fact here because the way that uh, the political climate is now, like with Russia and the Ukraine, like the first line of this book was Vladimir Putin, like the first two words of the <laughs> I was like, ugh. Obviously this was written before the war. Um, but it's talking about this, the situation in the Arctic. And it says that, so there's a lot of disputes as to like who, oh, the light looks like this because apparently those act like a, um, a sun lamp. Um, and because I can't read outside in the morning anymore, I think this is good for me. Um, okay, so, <laughs> so there's all of these legal disputes because there's a lot of like resources in the Arctic that people want to, get hold of, sorry, hiccups, again, always on camera. Um, so all of these people are trying to sort this out legally. <laughs> and uh, there's like a lot of claims that says, one of these most brazen claims comes from the Russians. Moscow's already put a marker down, a long way down. In 2007, it sent two manned submersibles, 13,980 feet below <laughs> the waves to the seabed of the North Pole and planted a rust-proof titanium Russian flag. If that is not some of the most childish shit I've ever heard. Like, fine, I'm going to make a, an indestructible flag and that'll mean it's mine forever. Like, what? 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 Like, <laughs> things I've learned in this book. But I will come and check up with you as soon as I've finished it. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so, Prisons of Geography. This was really excellent. This was one of the best non-fiction books I've ever read. It's about geopolitics. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was intimidated going into this book, which is why I've been reading it concurrently with other books. Um, but I found it so easy to read, like, a, a chapter, because the, the chapters are just long enough. They give you all this info, but not in an info-dumpy way, and it's really easy to absorb. Um, I feel like I know so much more about the world now. Um, and I know that so many of the problems in the world that happen today are because fucking white people, co co colon colonizers, <laughs> I was gonna say colonialists, but I struggled to say that word, but I said it anyway. Um, they basically looked at maps from places that were far away, I'm like paraphrasing an actual quote, and drew lines on it without actually knowing where different people lived and where um, 
you know, different different groups tended to gather. Um, so like they, they put lines in places which split off a bunch of like, say, like the one area was Muslim and the other area was Hindu. They just put a fucking line straight through it. And the the way that the, the world is structured, you can't do that. It needs to go in and out depending on the geography of the place and of the people who live there. And it's just, it's so interesting how many different maps, literally like the conflicts that we still see today were started freaking decades ago when a white man drew the wrong line because you couldn't be asked to actually figure out what the the people actually want all they wanted was land all they wanted was this place for themselves greedy assholes <laughs> um but yeah i i thought it was really really good so i'm very pleased with myself i have re finished reading three books this week so far so i have to form a crafty reads tomorrow which is great because i was running out of um stuff to do because I still don't have any work. Um, I have OF content scheduled for the next two weeks. So that's at least like a passive um, situation. But um, <clears throat> I am, I just set up some projects on Upwork. Um, you can have like a set project so like a client will come onto your, prep, uh, onto your page. And um, I've set up like a thousand word article, two five, uh, 2,500 word and 5,000 word and what the deliverables are, what the cost is and everything so people don't have to, like they can just click on it, send me the info. Um, so I've set up one of those uh, and then what else, I'm having a call with my mom today, she's leaving for South Africa tomorrow. I'm so excited, <laughs> I'm so, so excited. Um, Though I'm not going to see her that soon, but she's going to be in the same country as me. <laughs> I feel like the way that I'm working at the moment, it's like I'm playing at being a content creator because I'm trying so desperately um, to get work, but I don't have any right now. I'm making OF content. I have TikToks, like hashtag scheduled post like ready for me to post like I post every day more than more than every day on TikTok and I'm like growing my following. Um, then I've been editing and shooting YouTube videos, um, editing and, uh, sh shooting and editing Instagram pictures, um, and then writing my own article that I told you about last week that I submitted to, uh, an online website. Um, so yeah, I'm like creating a lot of stuff. I'm not static. I just don't have the work that I need right now. So... I'm just grateful I have it because if I didn't I think my mental health would really struggle I think I would really struggle sitting here thinking oh my god I don't have an income right now you know um it's it's keeping me a little bit more motivated um which is obviously good um I feel like I want to end off the vlog by finishing another book so I, for my cleaning and all of the other stuff that I'm doing today when I go out and do um, uh, some errands, I'm going to listen to One True Loves because now we've got to the point where it's in the present, she's got both men here and she doesn't know what to do. And her husband, the guy who we thought was dead, is very much like, okay, I know you had to move on, but I'm back now, so like, don't even say that guy's name, come, like, we're, we're married again, you know, which is understandable for him, but also like <laughs> the way the, his survival story is so far-fetched. I had to just disconnect from it. <laughs> it was a movie moment, okay? <laughs> no one swimming at sea for two days would have lived. No, mm, that's not possible. Um, but yeah, it, it's really compellingly written and I don't know which way she's gonna go. So while I do my cleaning, all of that kind of shit, I'm going to do dishes, hang up my washing, etc. I'm going to put on my audiobook and I'm going to finish it. So, yeah, I will catch you when that happens. Howdy, phew, this errands ended up being a fucking commorse. Um, but I've been listening to One True Loves and it's so funny. Cause like at this stage in my life right i have experienced monogamy and i've got a taste of polyamory not like 
fully like my partner had other partners yet but you know I've been introduced to it and I know what it's about um, and <laughs> I feel like all of the problems in this book could be solved with polyamory <laughs> <laughs> like I know not everybody is poly inclined obviously um, <laughs> this is obviously a very tense emotional situation but she's like asking her sister if it's possible to love more than one person at a time and it's just like I don't know and I'm like of course it is of course it's possible to love more than one person at a time but when you're coming at it from a completely monogamous standpoint it's it's like this big deal breaker like that's almost posed as a rhetorical question I feel I, I don't know but yeah it's just um, when you see things through a non not if you don't see monogamy as always being the answer it changes the way you view these types of books like quite a lot it's very interesting <laughs> I brought Tome a friend from the beach <laughs> it is a friend that will eventually disintegrate but I'm gonna put it in my garden and Abby can play with it. It's a seed pod, isn't it cool? Use the lighting, yes, I'm already in pajamas. This is my dinner. <laughs> Steamed tofu with like a um, soy, honey, um, and rice wine vinegar dressing, and some sesame seeds, noodles, and spinach. I am very excited. Hey there, friends. As you can see, I'm all set up to uh, for my crafty reads. Um, I've got up to that point again. <sighs> Let me just move this around a little bit. Give myself some room. Um, yeah, so I just finished um, One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, it did get a little bit frustrating uh, in the middle bit of it, but I really like the, the way she ended it off. Um, I had the same kind of feeling with um, maybe in another life, like the way she she ends things off, even though stuff is hard and bittersweet, she ends things off in a hopeful note um, and almost gives you like a things will work out kind of feeling. So like I remember getting that feeling after maybe in another life and this one was the same. So um, it, was, it was my least favorite of the ones that I've read of hers, but I still can see that it's a decent book and she, um, she writes really well. I mean, everyone knows she writes really well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to film Crafty Reads. Um, do you like my sea pod? I'm putting it in the background of my Crafty Reads today. Um, so I'm going to film my Crafty Reads uh, and then get on with going on job boards and stuff today. So I'm going to leave the vlog here. So if you did enjoy, please like, comment, subscribe, etc. <laughs> check out my bell for notifications and I'll check you next time.